Hello everyone and welcome to Lesson 15.1. I've entitled this video, Social Reform. This video is going to cover pages 404 to 407. Religion and Reform. Reverend James B. Finley described the scene this way. Primary source from autobiography of Reverend James B. Finley. The noise was like the roar of Niagara Falls. The vast sea of human beings seemed to be agitated as if by a storm. Some of the people were singing, others praying, some crying for mercy. While witnessing these scenes, a peculiarly strange sensation, such as I have never felt before, came over me. My heart beat tumultuously, my knees trembled, my lip quivered, and I felt as though I must fall to the ground. Finley was describing an early 19th century religious meeting called a revival. At this time, people traveled great distances to hear preachers speak and to pray, sing, weep, and shout. This wave of religious interest, known as the Second Great Awakening, stirred the nation. The First Great Awakening had spread through the colonies in the mid-1700s. Also at this time, a new spirit of reform took hold in the United States. The spirit brought changes to American religion, education, and literature. Some reformers sought to improve society by forming utopias, communities based on a vision of the perfect society. Most of these communities did not last. A few groups, such as the Mormons, did form lasting communities. The Impact of Religion Attending revivals often made men and women eager to reform their own lives and the world. Some people became involved in missionary work or social reform movements. Among those movements was the push to ban alcohol. Connecticut minister Lyman Beecher was the leader of this movement. He wanted to protect society from, quote, rum-selling, tippling folk, infidels, and rough scuff. Beecher and other reformers called for temperance, or drinking little or no alcohol. They used lectures, pamphlets, and revival-style rallies to warn people of the dangers of liquor. The temperance movement persuaded Maine and some other states to outlaw the manufacture and sale of alcohol. States later repealed most of these laws. Changing Education Reformers also wanted to improve education. Most schools had little money and many teachers lacked training. Some people opposed the idea of compulsory or required education. In addition, some groups faced barriers to schooling. Parents often kept girls at home. They thought someone who was likely to become a wife and mother did not need much education. Many schools also denied African Americans the right to attend. Massachusetts lawyer Horace Mann was a leader of educational reform. He believed education was a key to wealth and economic opportunity for all. Partly because of his efforts, in 1839, Massachusetts founded the nation's first state-supported normal school, a school for training high school graduates to become teachers. Other states soon adopted Mann's reforms. New colleges and universities opened their doors during the age of reform. Most of them admitted only white men, but other groups also began winning access to higher education. Oberlin College of Ohio, for example, was founded in 1833. The college admitted both women and African Americans. Helping people with disabilities. Reformers also focused on teaching people with disabilities. Thomas Gallaudet developed a method to teach those with hearing impairments. He opened the Hartford School for the Deaf in Connecticut in 1817. At that same time, Samuel Gridley Howe was helping people with vision impairments. He printed books using an alphabet created by Lewis Braille, which used raised letters a person could, quote, read with his or her fingers. Howe reached, excuse me, Howe headed the Perkins Institute, a school for the visually impaired in Boston. School teacher Dorothea Dix began visiting prisons in 1841. She found some prisoners chained to the walls with little or no clothing, often in unheated cells. Dix also learned that some inmates were guilty of no crime. Instead, they were suffering from mental illnesses. Dix made it her life's work to educate the public about the poor conditions for prisoners and persons suffering from mental illness. Culture Changes Art and literature of the time reflected the changes in society and culture. American authors and artists developed their own style and explored American themes. Writers such as Margaret Fuller, Ralph Waldo Emerson, and Henry David Thoreau stressed the relationship between humans and nature and the importance of the individual conscience. This literary movement was known as transcendentalism. In his works, 
Emerson urged people to listen to the inner voice of conscience and to overcome prejudice. Thoreau practiced civil disobedience, refusal to obey laws he found unjust. For example, Thoreau went to jail in 1846 rather than pay a tax to support the Mexican War. In poetry, Henry Wadsworth Longfellow wrote narrative or story poems such as the Song of Hiawatha. Walt Whitman captured the new American spirit and confidence in his Leaves of Grass. Emily Dickinson wrote hundreds of simple, deeply personal poems, many of which celebrated the natural world. And I've got that we've already read this one, so I'm going to skip that part and just go to this. American artists also explored American topics and developed a purely American style. Beginning in the 1820s, a group of landscape painters known as the Hudson River School focused on scenes of the Hudson River Valley. Printmakers Nathaniel Currier and James Merritt Ives created popular prints that celebrated holidays, sporting events, and rural life. Well, there we go. The videos go a lot faster when I don't have the questions in there, although you did have the Ed Puzzle questions throughout, so I hope you enjoyed. Thank you so much for watching, and before we go, of course, I've got a meme. Good, good. Let the urge for social change flow through you. <laughs> Thanks again for watching, and have a great day.